Okay, so we're going to talk today about how to use Social Studio to mine historical social media data for research. Um, whether you're an undergrad student or a graduate student or a faculty member, um, you know, social media data is obviously uh, very important to study. Um, and I, I really am just so happy that the library has, uh, at the University of Colorado, has taken the initiative um, to acquire a tool that helps you collect social media data and kind of export it into more friendly formats for research. So um, social media or social studio is an enterprise level social listening tool. Um, and again, it's available for all students and faculty. And really at its core, it has the ability to go up to full or three full years um, back in time um, to give you a full historical picture of what happened on various social media platforms. In particular, it's, it's very good at collecting Twitter, public, uh, public Facebook pages, um, Tumblr uh, uh, posts and, and blog posts, um, and other websites such as news websites. We're gonna just scratch the surface and focus mainly on Twitter today, but I wanna show you how to kind of get a search set up in uh, Social Studio, and I just wanna show you some of the functionality that I've found um, to be particularly helpful. So, uh, you know, uh, first point is that you've got to have a special login um, to access Social Studio, and it's not, uh, it doesn't authenticate through our University of Colorado system. So, someone's got to basically create an account for you. If you don't have an account yet, we're going to have a link in the video um, or description for you guys to um, get that login and get it set up. You've got to be someone affiliated with the University of Colorado to have that to have that account. So I've got one, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And uh, you should see when you first log in, you should see just kind of a, um, an overview of all of your dashboards. So let's see if our internet uh, wants to behave and take a look. Okay, so if you're if you're not um, if you don't see this page, um, and if you have a different starting page, maybe if you're logging in for the first time, you can go to socialstudio.radian6.com/analyze, and that should take you to uh, the same screen that I'm seeing. So I'll just make sure that that's the case. Yep. So socialstudio.radian6.com slash analyze. There really quickly, there are three kind of big features that are associated with, with, with Social Studio. And uh, we're really gonna just focus on the analyze function in this video. The analyze function is the social listening function of Social Studio. It's the way that you can listen in on different social media data sources using different keywords and searches. Um, and that's what we're going to focus on. There are other uses of Social Studio. Uh, some of it the university has acquired, others we don't have access to. Uh, that's for another time and another place. But really, most of the social listening that you do um, in Social Studio is done uh, through this gallery view. So a gallery is at the highest level um, the way in which we uh, uh, create a collection of social listening um, dashboards that we can access. So um, we need to create a new dashboard. Um, if you don't have one, you've got to make one to get started. Um, so the, the type of dashboard that we're going to cover um, is a social listening summary. I know that it's going to be tempting if you're looking for Twitter data to click this Twitter account summary, or if you're looking for um, you know YouTube data to click this button, um, but really we need to be right here in the social listening summary no matter what you'd like to do. Um, yeah. Sorry, we, just come back. Um, we actually don't act, we don't have access to those other um, tabs anyway, like the Twitter and YouTube and Facebook. Um, you can't actually import your own username or profile into here. You can basically only look for um, public data, not what is currently happening with your own account. Yep. So we're going to be in that social listening summary and, and we're going to spend most of our time in there. Um, so the first real, so you've got this concept of a gallery. That's that's this high level thing that hosts all of your different dashboards. But then there's another concept that I'm going to throw at you called a topic profile. You could think of a topic profile as a, um, as a search query. Um, you've got to, you know, most of the data that you want to access in Social Studio has to be queried um, through search terms. Um, Social Studio needs to know what you're looking for. 
So all of that is done through this concept of a topic profile. So we're gonna create a new topic profile and we're gonna talk about how to set it up and um, what it's gonna return as a result. So I'm gonna click that button. I've gotta give it a name. If I don't name it, it'll yell at me. Um, so I'm just gonna call this uh, Chris delete because I just wanna to remember to delete these. And uh, it's always a good practice uh, to delete uh, your topic profiles when you're done with them um, because they take up space in our in our kind of quota um, at the university. So please, when you're finished with the topic profile, um, you know, go ahead and, um, and, and make it inactive. And we'll show you how to do that at the end of this video. Um, so a couple different um, concepts here that we've got to unpack. So uh, Social Studio by default has kind of taken us into this first keyword group. Keyword groups are just sets of search terms, and these groupings really are helpful when you're searching for different kinds of things. If you're only searching for one um, different one thing or one entity or one set of search words, and you really don't think you'll ever want to break up the results um, into more granular um, sets of keywords, then one keyword group is fine. Um, if you have different things that you'd like to search for and you'd like to do that, all within one dashboard, then creating multiple keyword groups is really the way to go. Um, so, uh, you know, if I was just searching for Joe Biden, then one keyword group would probably be suffice. But if, uh, if I wanted to search for multiple political candidates, I need to create multiple keyword groups, one for each candidate. And that's gonna come in handy later on. It'll give us the ability to filter data down by specific candidates so that we can um, get some more granular results in our reporting later on. So I'm gonna do just that, and I'm going to call this first keyword group Biden. And in those keywords, I'm going to add um, some keywords that, uh, that I think would uh, pull good data down on social media um, for Joe Biden. So, you know, uh, this, this video can't go through um, writing uh, all of the ways in which you can write good search queries. Um, but I do think it's important to understand that certain words are going to retrieve more precise or accurate data than others. So um, if I just choose to search on Social Studio for Biden, um, I'm going to get most of those, um, most of those mentions of, uh, of Joe Biden. Um, I, I'm gonna, you know, I think that it's nice to, you know, Biden is a fairly uncommon last name, so I don't feel like I need to, to include the keyword Joe Biden, um, but, you know, this is all of these keywords and the ways that you set them, there's playing around with them, looking at what you actually get in the end report result, and then playing with these keywords to make them as accurate as possible is really a best practice. You know, um, if I really wanted to try to get even more of the conversation, I might do something like this and add, um, you know, one of the uh, slang term for um, Joe Biden. There are other uh, ways in which people presumably on social media could mention um, uh, Joe Biden. So we'd want to think about that. Um, we might want to look up what his Twitter name is, and we might want to add that as well. I'm going to go ahead and assume that his uh, Twitter name is, is Joe Biden with all, all one word. If it's not, of course, we want to actually make that his actual, um, his actual username. So there's a, lot of different, um, there's a lot of different ways in which you might imagine someone would mention uh, part of a conversation on Twitter. And I think that you want to be really, uh, you want to be thoughtful about this process. In general, just picking a handful of hashtags that, are, um, that have conversations um, inside of them, such as like hashtag Dem debate, um, really can give you a biased sample um, and you could miss a lot of the conversation. So I really encourage you to, to think about those keywords um, beyond, um, beyond just hashtags uh, as well. Um, so you can, you can do a bunch with search operators here. Um, you could say, um, you, could, you, can, you can use the and and the not function as well. Um, so if I wanted to create a search term that was Joe and Biden, I can do that as well um, with this. And what that would do is it would say that the, the, the data or the, the data that it would return um, would have to have a mention of Joe and the word Biden in it. Um, similarly, you can do or operators in here. Um, you, could, you could think um, if for some reason we wanted to pull down data for Trump, 
or Biden, we can do we can do that um, by uh, simply just entering in both keywords. So we could we could have those both in. Um, but if we wanted um, to uh, uh, do something like we wanted it to be Joe, but not Cocker, then um, we would get mentions. We would get all tweets that mention Joe, but not. Uh, but not have the word cocker in it. So there are presumably a bunch of other Joes um, that are popular out there in the world. And so if we really wanted all uh, to try to retrieve all of those mentions of, uh, uh, of Joe, uh, the, the political candidate, but not Joe, um, the musician, then we'd have to go through and kind of add Joe, not, uh, and then that, that last name um, to every single one of those possible false positive mentions. So, you know, really taking some time to build this out is, is really um, nice. Um, you know, you can do and mentions as well. So if you wanted all of uh, tweets that mention Joe Biden and then maybe a particular issue like immigration, you, um, you can set it up as such. So um, this search, uh, as, as it's set up right now, would only retrieve tweets that mention Joe Biden and immigration. So it's going to be a much smaller set um, and, uh, and it's going to be a much more focused sample. So you can decide on, you know, how specific you want to do this. In the past, uh, when, I've, when I've done research, uh, we wanted to look at a particular issue of vaccines and autism. We didn't want all of the tweets associated with vaccines and we didn't want all of the tweets associated with autism. We wanted uh, the contains keyword uh, to be uh, vaccines, and then the, the and contains keyword to be autism. So um, that's really nice as well. You can also just kind of globally um, exclude keywords as well. If you don't want any tweets that mention Donald Trump, you just want tweets that mention Joe Biden, then that is how you would set that up. If there's a tweet that mentions Biden and Trump, it will be excluded if you're setting up your topic in that way. Um, anything you want to add at the topic level, Stacey? Um, just maybe reiterate something you mentioned, and that's um, all these boxes are basically ORed. You're ORing, you're choosing tweets that contains either Biden or Uncle Joe or Joe Biden. Um, it's not, you're looking for at least one of these words. Um, and if you want multiple ones, that's where you use the and contains keywords box. Um, Absolutely. Something that it's not as clear, just know that you're looking for at least one of those words. Absolutely. Um, and one other thing that might be useful is like, this is a new subject or area that you're looking into, is you can go right to Twitter, twitter.com, and just look at tweets and maybe see what words people are using and hashtags people are using to describe the topic that you're interested in and just jot that down and that's something that you'd want to incorporate here. Absolutely. Um, so to just go to Twitter and look at what the, what people are using there. Yeah, even even 15 minutes of your time to figure out what those keywords are going to be and what are other possible keywords that you might want to include um, are really is really going to really going to help you uh, create a really quality sample. So um, so I'm going to go ahead and click create keyword group, and you'll see that uh, we now have a setup for. Uh, for this uh, topic profile, but we're not done yet. Remember that I said that this concept of keyword groups is nice because when we're looking for multiple things, um, we can add multiple keyword groups uh, to each map to, to one specific thing. This will be really helpful later when we're filtering the data. So if we wanted to look at mentions of Biden and we wanted to uh, also look at mentions of Trump, well, we can create a new keyword group for Trump um, and again, I'm going to go ahead and just um, go ahead and type in Trump for the sake of time. I'm not going to go and add in his Twitter name and other things and other ways in which he might be mentioned. And I'm going to go ahead and, and exclude all tweets that mention Biden, just because I want a mutually exclusive sample. You don't have to do this, but you know, for me, I'd like to see tweets that just mention Biden in one bin and tweets that just mention Trump in another bin. Um, so that we can do some things like sentiment analysis and know that there's no overlap between those two groups. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, create keyword group and you can see I now have two groups, one for Biden and one for Trump and I'll be able to filter on this later. So uh, another uh, set of filters that are really important and I think that really help you 
uh, really get your sample down and, and whittle it down and make it helpful uh, is uh, to look at these filters that uh, Social Studio gives you. So the first one's just based on language. And uh, for the sake of this analysis, we're gonna look at only English tweets or English stuff that social media or that Social Studio imports. So I'm gonna change that to, to English. Um, I'm also going to change my media type here. I'm just gonna like show you uh, what's available. Um, there's, there's a lot of options and uh, not all of these, don't get too excited. Not all of these really work that well in our experience. Um, you know, certainly Twitter works uh, very well. We we're able to get all mentions of Twitter data using Social Studio. Um, and this is historical and known to be generally exhaustive, you know, a nice full archive. Um, we do, uh, it does in my experience look like the YouTube um, uh, tool works as well. So you can get videos that in their captions mention um, specific keywords. Um, it does pull in news and blogs. So if you want mentions of these candidates in um, news and blogs, that also works. Um, from our experience, Instagram does not work any longer, so you won't be able to kind of find Instagram posts that have, that have captions that match your keywords. Unfortunately, that function does not work. Um, don't count on Facebook uh, for, to return much data. Um, Facebook changed the way that, uh, that second party or third party data providers um, have access to, to profiles. So. While you might get a little bit of data back on people that have completely public Facebook profiles, you're not going to get back a ton of uh, Facebook data. So, um, so that's just kind of a caveat there is that Instagram and Facebook don't work well. Are there any other sources here that you want to call out, Stacy, or anything that you think that people have found useful in using this? Um, from my experience, I just think Twitter has probably the most robust data in here. I, um... I think that's what I've used it the most and what people have found to be the most useful. And I agree. And I think that's, that's where we'll focus the most of our time. But for the sake of this exercise, we'll leave all this other stuff checked just to see what we get back. Um, however, if you know that you're going to just study Twitter or if you know that you just want to study news or YouTube, I would encourage you to just filter down at this point and only check the box associated with the source that you want. I'm going to leave mine all um, to any for now. And then, of course, you can also um, inference by region. So I don't think there's any way to exhaustively and empirically know that someone is in the United States when they tweet or when they're or if they're in Bahrain uh, when they tweet. But uh, Social Studio seems to have uh, this idea of country down as well. So we're interested in just data from the United States. So I'm going to go ahead and put that filter on there, and it's only going to retrieve. Um, data that it believes uh, originated from the United States. That means tweets sent from the United States, uh, uh, YouTube posts that originated from the United States, so on and so forth. Um, um, and we're going to talk about source groups um, in a little bit, um, but we'll come back to that. But for now, I think what, what's really important is just uh, showing you what this uh, topic profile looks like. Um, so uh, one more thing I did want to mention is that um, I'm going to, well, I, I need to save this. So I'm going to save it. And now that it's saved, um, I'm going to, it's going to go ahead and actually automatically um, pull this, um, this initial social listening summary for the topic that I created. Um, so uh, this is really, um, what you see is what you get for most parts. You can see that, as we said, most of the data comes from Twitter. This is just a time series of number of mentions across time. And uh, you can see that uh, we have over, um, over this is like 1.5 million um, posts per day. You can see that in this seven day window, which we can see up here in the top right. So between April 17th and April 24th, we have about 13 million total posts. The majority of those are coming from Twitter. We do have some data as well coming from, from forums. Uh, I'm, I'm not really an expert as to what will be inside of that forum data. Um, you can look at Social Studio's methodology if you're, if you're more interested. We do actually have about 20,000 posts from Facebook. In my experience, the Facebook data usually um, the, in Social Studio comes from groups 
and um, various public pages um, where the conversation is presumed to be public. So this isn't wall posts from individual Facebook users, but individual users commenting on um, various pages across Facebook that are public or open. Um, we have some news here as well. You know, not a small amount, really, if you think about it. Over seven days, 9,000 articles. That's actually uh, you know, quite exceptional, um, you know, and, and a nice uh, data source in and of itself. I haven't really vetted what news is in or is not in here. Again, Social Studio probably has some more method on that if you're interested in using that news sample. But we have some different things, and um, we could uh, quickly export uh, this data if we want. Any single uh, pane that you see here uh, can be exported to a CSV. So if I want this time series of total number of mentions across time, I can just right click and click export and I'm going to get that time series data um, ready, um, you know, to be opened in Excel. And, you know, for a lot of research, if you've got your search query down and you know that your topic profile is highly accurate, you know, just looking at a time, you know, doing some type of time series analysis, this might be all you need, right? This might be the, the day by day change that you want to observe, that you want to model, or that you want to study. Um, but of course, Social Studio gives you some other things as well. Um, so on the left here, we just kind of have a raw view of the individual uh, data that Social Studio is pulling in. So this first example here is a, is a tweet, and it's got uh, you can see that it, this tweet matched Trump, so that's why it's part of our collection. Um, and you can kind of scroll through. Not all of these will be tweets. Um, in fact, uh, if you keep scrolling, we'll see some stuff from other sources eventually. Um, and we, we can filter down to see the other sources as well. Um, if you'd like to just take a quick view of what does the Facebook data look like, then you can click to Facebook and click uh, Facebook again. And then eventually on the right here, you'll start to see some examples. Of, um, of Facebook posts. So you can see that some of these look like they are public discussions on Facebook pages. So um, again, you can, you can export um, you know, the raw data as well, and that can be very helpful for researchers. So let's say that you get your search query down and you've gotten, you've gotten this dashboard pulling in only the data that you want. Well, once you get reached that point, you can export the, this feed view um, into an Excel-friendly format. And so to request that export, you click this export as CSV. Now, if you want this post-by-post -post data where you can almost imagine that in Excel, each post, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or whatever, becomes a row in your, um, in your export. Um, but there are some limits uh, as to how much data you can export and, um, and how much you can kind of free from this dashboard. Um, and uh, a lot of that is actually based on terms of service. It's kind of not even a social studio thing. It's more the social media platforms themselves. So um, the, this tool will export a maximum of 500,000 posts, but only 50,000 posts a day will have the metadata associated with them. Um, metadata is really anything associated um, with a tweet or a post that is uh, beyond the ID of that tweet or post. So um, if you want the text of tweets, that's considered metadata, and that means that per day you can only export up to 50,000 of those things. So you have a couple options. You can see here that we have 13 million posts in this view, so I could decide that, well, Maybe a sample of 50,000 is enough. If that's the case, then I just need to click export as CSV, change this to 50K, and then hit export. I'll get an email when that Excel file is ready, and I'll be able to download that Excel file straight from the email that I receive. In general, it takes anywhere from five to minutes to an hour to get that export in your inbox, depending on the size of the export. However, um, it's important to note that you can get the actual IDs of these posts or the URLs associated with news articles um, if you'd like to somehow manually get the data or collect the data yourself. And if you are okay with trying to um, hydrate tweets or um, try to go out to news articles and actually fetch the text of the article yourself, um, then you can request up to this 500,000 per day. 
Um, so that's a much you know, more gracious limit. And it's really helpful for historical Twitter data. Again, you can get the ID of up to a half a million tweets per day. So you could just literally go in here. Um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the 500,000 limit is actually not even on a per day limit. You can actually request these 500K samples as many as you'd like. You can only have one request going at a time, but um, you know you could request one of these probably every hour on the hour. So if I really wanted these 13 million tweets and I needed every single one of them to do my research, well, I'd need to do 26 requests each for a half million at a time. Um, and, and I can't uh, be sure that I'm getting them all um, unless I change my window to be less than 500,000. So if you wanna get all of the IDs associated with all of the tweets uh, for this broad search term, well, you're really gonna need to go down to probably one day and, and do these requests one day at a time. Um, and then you're probably gonna have to filter down even more um, to a specific candidate mentioned. So let's see how many tweets there are just in the last day for Trump and Biden. It's crunching the numbers, Stacy. We have 3.1 million tweets for the last day alone, that's still over that 500,000 quota. So remember that we created these keyword groups and we can actually filter the data by keyword group and we can see if we can get under that half million. So I'm gonna go to that, I'm gonna go to my keyword group filter up here and I'm going to uncheck this and I'm just going to look and see if there are less than half a million um, Biden tweets in the last day. I'm gonna filter that. And it looks like we're right at that half million. I'm gonna also filter so I'm not looking at all media types. I just wanna look at tweets because I'm only interested in tweets now. And you can see that even in the last day, we still have 512. So this is about as, as, as big of a data set as we can pull down. Really uh, a limit of using this GUI is that you can only get up to 500K per um, request. We could try a random sample and pull this twice if we had to and we'd probably get all of our 512. Um, but again, to request that export and to get those tweet IDs, uh, you just literally uh, uh, change this to 500k and, and hit export. You need to, uh, you, once you do that, you need to uh, wait for that report to come in, download it, and then come back in, change your day um, from April 23rd to 24th to April 22nd to April 23rd. You just kind of have to keep requesting those windows um, in, uh, in the manner that you'd like. So just something for you to keep in mind. Um, I keep talking about these tweet IDs because it's very easy once you have a li list of tweet IDs to hydrate those tweets into the full um, metadata um, that those tweets contain. They're JSON, all of the fields, all of the user descriptions, all of that stuff um, that you might want associated with the tweet can be hydrated with just this ID. We'll actually have another video where we go through how to take a social studio export and hydrate Twitter IDs. But for now, just know if that's what you'd ultimately like to do, um, then you can request up to half a million a day. Um, but if you don't wanna mess around with hydrating tweets um, and you just want uh, an export um, that you can easily manage and manipulate, um, then you really only can get 50,000, um, whatever it is, um, a day for Social Studio. Um, so that's kind of a limitation of the platform. You can get 50,000 today, you can come back and get 50,000 tomorrow and just keep doing that. Um, and if the sample's small enough, you should be able to do that in short order. Um, uh, so that's a total option for you as well. So there's a couple, um, so we, we went through filtering and we noticed that we can filter by media type, we can filter by our keyword groups, we really can filter by a number of things. We can filter by sentiment as well, if we just wanna look at negative tweets or positive tweets. Um, Social Studio has the ability to train sentiment manually um, so that you could actually, um, you know, slowly teach the computer what is a positive tweet and what is a negative tweet for you and your research question. That could be very useful um, uh, for you. Um, we'll, we'll include a link on how to do that in the profile, or I mean in the video description for today, but that's not something I've actually done, so I'm gonna leave that out. Um, but know that, you, that just as there is a default sentiment here, you can actually train 
your own sentiment by labeling tweets, by manually going in and labeling tweets and giving Social Studio um, some evidence as to what words associate with positive tweets and what words associate with negative tweets for you. Similarly, you can build classifiers for different kinds of things, like whether a tweet mentions something specific um, to build a classifier to kind of weed through this data and get down to a sample um, that is much more, you know, useful to you as a scholar. Um, you know, it's nice to be able to have this basic machine learning uh, technology to be able to uh, weed through all this data and so you don't have to download this 512,000 if you just want um, something more specific inside of this data that maybe you didn't know or isn't as straightforward like a keyword. Um, so on and so forth. So um, some other cool things to look at here, um, you know, you have um, you have actual, uh, you know, a word cloud, you can download these word clouds. Um, you can see um, what what words are most popular um, uh, inside of the topic profile that you've created. Um, and you can also get a sentiment time series here um, as well. So this is the same as the time series that we were looking at, but just uh, looking at specifically um, positive and negative sentiment. So uh, this is really this is really where most of the magic happens um, inside of Social Studio. Um, this this uh, panel here I, I haven't mentioned, but um, has some type of rough proxy as to how influential a, a social media user is. So you can kind of see who inside of your data is talking about what you're interested in um, that is influential. If you if you have a hypothesis around looking at people that are influencers, you can um, look at those people um, inside of your data in this panel as well. Is there anything here, Stacy, that I haven't covered that you think is really important? Um, yeah, if you are looking at these tweets and you realize they're not about your topic at all, you can change your topic profile pretty easily by clicking on the downward arrow and mm -hmm. fall edit sources. Um, and click the topic profile that you're working in. Um, and click the arrow, yeah, to the right of that. And you can just go into here um, and change your keyword groups. So um, it's kind of the way to get back to this stage of, of setting this up. Absolutely. And this is a really good segue to another thing I'd like to talk about. Social Studio, um, when you create a keyword uh, group, or as they call it, topic profile, when you create a topic profile, um, if you click on the info tab, you can actually get the um, the ID associated with it. And I actually don't see that ID here. It would be nice to get it. We'll get it in another pane in just a second. If you'd like to share a topic profile or a workspace with somebody, you can do it in this tab as well. So if you're collaborating with someone, you can actually share the, um, the dashboard that you created, um, and you can uh, actually share specific topic profiles as well if you're working with someone and collaborating. So that's nice, it does uh, give you that ability. Of course, that account of the person that you'd like to share it with needs to be registered before you can uh, do that sharing, so make sure that they have an account registered as well. Um, um, let me just go ahead and click on um, back to my analyze view so I can show you how to share a dashboard with an individual. So if you wanna, if you wanna share this thing that we just created, you just go back to that analyze view, find the dashboard and then just click share. Um, and then from there, um, you click entire workspace and click apply. And then inside of that, um, how do we share these dashboards? I forget. We'll come back to that at the end, um, if I can remember. But uh, some other things that might be important to you um, is if you want to manage, if you want to manage all of the topic profiles that you've ever created, um, it, you have to go into this admin panel. So if you want to look at some of the past topic profiles that you've created, um, you have to go into this admin panel. There's a couple of reasons why you might want to come in here and take a look. The first thing, uh, so we're going to look for topic profiles here, and then we're going to click manage. So inside of here you can see that each topic profile has an ID and that ID is really important to know um, because, if, it, because if you'd like to request historical access to uh, social studio data beyond 30 days, you need to know the ID to, um, to enable that request. So that request 
uh, that you, it's just an email that you need to send to Social Studio Report or to Social Studio Support, excuse me. And again, we'll have that email in the description of the video. Um, but you are going to need that ID that associates with your topic profile to, to facilitate that request. So that's the thing you've got to gather. And it looks like that's really the only way that you can find access to those IDs is by, um, is by looking in this admin panel. So, um, you know, I think it's important to go back and take a quick look at, um, at that time window. I don't think we did enough justice there. Um, you'll see that any new topic profile by default kind of has a max of going back to 30 days. So that's kind of the max we can go back. Social Studio, though, as I mentioned, actually has three years of historical Twitter data. Um, so if you'd like to go back beyond 30 days, you've got to send that request in um, to gain that historical access. Um, once you have that access, you'll be able to go back and, and look further back into time. If you'd like to look at a specific date range just by clicking this down arrow and clicking custom, um, you can pick those days. And again, if we had historical data, we'd be able to go back and choose you know, a, a prior time and um, set that window to the exact days that we're interested in. Whenever you set a date here and hit set, um, that's gonna change this whole dashboard and all of the data that you see will be contextual to that time period that you set. Any questions at all or any or anything you want to add, Stacey? Um, I don't think so. I think you did a great job covering it. Okay, great. So I want to do one more thing, um, and, and I think it's really important, uh, is this idea of source groups. So what, we, what we've been talking about with Social Studio so far has simply been um, this idea of a search um, you, could, you could liken the search that we just built for Joe Biden and Donald Trump to a search that you just go to search.twitter.com and you uh, type in those keywords and you'll get back tweets and you can scroll until your eyes bleed. You know, just, that's the same thing that, we, that we're looking at aggregate uh, data for here. Um, however, Social Studio also gives you the ability to collect data based on sources. So sources are defined broadly for Social Studio, but a source could be a specific Twitter account. If you want all of the tweets from just one Twitter account, like all of the tweets from Joe Biden or all of the tweets from Donald Trump, you can set that up via a source group. Other source groups include Facebook pages, public Facebook pages and pu uh, public Facebook groups. So if you want all of the public Facebook posts for the Boulder Mom Facebook group, you can set up a source group in Social Studio that will only give you data for that page. So instead of searching for keywords, you're searching for data inside of sources or data inside of social media pages, data inside of social media accounts. Um, so it's a nice way to, uh, to collect data on specific um, sources. So uh, I will, again, we'll include a link on how to format source groups. Um, they vary on platform, but the big ones that I've found really useful in the research that I've done have been source groups for specific Twitter accounts and source groups for specific Facebook pages. It also does specific Weibo pages, specific forums, specific news sites. If you want all of the news from a specific site, you can try a source group in Social Studio. No promise that it's gonna work perfectly, um, but you can at least try it. It's easy to set up and see if, the, if it's crawling or scraping technology will work. Even specific Pinterest pages can be set up as source groups. Um, so how do we set up a source group? Well, again, we have to create a topic profile with that source group assigned to it. So I'm gonna go back to the topic profile that I just created and I am going to um, manipulate my data a bit. So first I'm gonna change my filters just to any and I'm gonna hit okay. Now I've gotta go back to this top little uh, checkbox and click bulk edit sources. So I'm gonna go back into the topic profile that I already made um, because I just wanna edit what I've already been working on for today. So I'm gonna remove these keyword groups because I don't want specific keywords inside of sources. I'm just going to want all data from these sources. So I don't wanna filter any more than just getting data for a specific source. So I'm gonna delete those. And now I see that there are no um, keyword groups assigned. 
I'm going to go ahead and add a source group now. And I'm going to click the little add button here. And I, um, I can see that there are a bunch of source groups that's already, that have already been created. And I could go in here and look for um, one that I want. So I've already created one for Wendy's Facebook. Um, I'm going to check that one and we'll look at how that's formatted in a minute. So this is only going to give me Wendy's Facebook page data. So all of the posts that were generated from Wendy's Facebook page. So if someone commented on the Facebook page, I would get that data back. All of the posts that Wendy's themselves make to their Facebook page would also be included in this data. A little small caveat is we've got to change this include match to include all content. If we don't make that change, this doesn't work. So we got to make that change. So I'm going to go ahead and um, click on it and it's show you a little bit more of what this looks like. So you can see here that uh, really a source group is, is, is very simple. It's just a URL um, that the Social Studio platform is going to then look at to try to collect data from. So I've got a source group here already configured for Facebook and I just followed the exact format that um, Social Studio um, describes in, it, in a blog post. And again, we'll put the link to that blog post um, in the description of the video so you can go through and format your URL to look exactly like what you need it to look like. But for Facebook, it's facebook.com slash pages slash Wendy's. Um, and then I actually have to get the Facebook ID for Wendy's, which is kind of a pain. Um, however, uh, they tell you how to, re how to retrieve this ID if you follow along in the steps. So I'm going to go ahead, um, you know, I could have just typed this URL in right up here and click add and it would, it would add it down here, but I've already have it saved, so I don't need to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click back and I'm going to click save topic profile. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And you're going to see here, I'm going to need to change my filters because I was just filtering down on Twitter data. I'm going to want to do any type of data. And Chris, this is still like the last 30 days, right? Even yeah. Though it's mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now we're just looking at the last 30 days. Um, but you can see here that we're actually getting some really good Facebook data back. So now we're looking at Facebook page activity that happened on the Wendy's Facebook page. And so this is a really nice way to scrape Facebook data. Facebook data for pages is really hard to get. Um, Social Studio still has it figured out. It seems to work fairly well. Um, and you can see that some of these are like negative posts, like people saying, hey, you know, the Wendy's is false advertising, so on and so forth. So we can do, um, we can do this uh, for Facebook pages. Um, if I wanted to create a source group uh, for, uh, uh, you know, a specific Twitter profile like Donald Trump, I could do that as well. I think I could just, I'll just quickly come in and do that real quick. So going back to my topic profile, clicking the button and, um, and then I could just add another source group here. If I also wanted, um, if I also wanted uh, a source group for Wendy's, uh, Twitter account, it would just be, I believe it's just twitter.com slash Wendy's. So we'll go ahead and add that. Save that source group. I think I've got to give it a name. If you ever see a failed error like that, you just got to give it a name. Um, and then hit save. And then I'll hit save again because it says it's selected. So now I have Wendy's and Wendy's Facebook. And I'll hit save and it should pull in their Twitter data as well. So, uh, so those are really the two big ways in which you can do searches um, in Social Studio. You can either search for uh, you know, kind of general mentions of terms or you can search for data inside of sources. Either way, it's a really powerful way to get the data down. That's exactly what you're looking at. Anything else we'd like to add before we sign off for today? Um, no, I think this is covered a lot. Um, yeah. Any help, feel free to get in touch with me. I'm Stacy Gilbert, the librarian. Um, and we're happy to help you get started and so on. 
Yes, and let us know if you if you if you find a second video useful where we actually walk through how to hydrate Twitter IDs. If that's something that I get a few requests for, I'll film another video for that. And uh, and we appreciate you. Thanks for using Social Studio. It justifies uh, the library acquiring it. And thanks to the library um, for acquiring such a useful tool for research. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah, happy to.